Obama administration. Joining me tonight is White House Press Secretary Jay Carney. Jay, thanks for being here. Brett, glad to be with you. Congressman uh, Ryan reacted to the president's speech uh, today, as you heard a bit, a bit of that in Ed's piece, but he went on to say that the commander-in-chief is acting like campaigner-in-chief. Uh, he's not coming up with solutions and ideas. He'd rather have bitter partisan attacks. How do you respond to that? Well, Brett, I would simply ask Congressman Ryan to respond with the same specificity, the same reliance on math and facts uh, as the president presented in his speech today. He instead, he responded with a lot of boilerplate. But leadership is not presenting a budget uh, that uh, we use as a magic asterisk to explain away $900 billion in additional non-defense discretionary spending cuts uh, that says we're going to give massive tax cuts to uh, the wealthiest Americans and somehow pay for them uh, with unspecified closing of loopholes and, and, and other means that uh, Congressman Ryan said he'd let the Ways and Means Committee deal with in the future. That's not responsible budget presentation. What the president did today was lay out clearly and in wonky detail uh, why that vision uh, isn't right for America and why it does represent a, uh, a, a, a situation in the Republican Party where what used to be the center of the party has disappeared and uh, realigned itself with what is, is a very conservative vision that's outside of the American mainstream. Jay, you say responsible budget presentation. Uh, Democrats put forward a budget that failed in the House. Uh, the president's, a version of the president's budget was voted on in the House, and Democrats said it was a stunt, but it fell 414 to zero. Right. Senate and Democrats, Senate Democrats have not passed a budget resolution in 1,070 days. Why? Come on, Brett. You can cite, and I know that, that you often do, the statistics that uh, uh, represent, you know, gimmickry and stunts and wait, voting wait, wait. like that. Wait, wait, What's gimmickry about but not the, the present, passing you, a budget the, in the, the Senate? You, look, it is our preference that uh, Congress work and the Senate effectively uh, pass a budget. But so you, why you doesn't know the president how, call you know, Harry Reid and say, the, why the don't we get a budget on the table and vote on it? Brett, I know that's what you want to make this segment about. The president put forward and laid out his budget proposal, which has as its core a balanced approach, a balance that to this day Congressman Ryan rejects. There's a lot of uh, citation uh, on cable and elsewhere about uh, the Simpson-Bowles Commission. Jay, and, listen, and how the, the question is about the Senate that. Democratic you know leadership, the Jay. The Congressman Jay, Ryan Harry and Reid controls the Senate, hey, Brett, and he has, to have the a, he has to have a 51 number to get a Senate budget resolution passed through. Why doesn't he put something close to the president's budget on the table in the Senate and pass it with 51 votes? He has the votes. Brett, the president has put forward a budget proposal. He would absolutely uh, be delighted if Republicans were willing to uh, approach the, our ch deficit challenges in the same balanced way that every bipartisan commission says we must. And that the Simpson-Bowles Commission, which a lot of people like to cite as uh, a high standard which has to be met, uh, included in its membership Congressman Ryan and two other House Republicans. And guess what? They voted against it. I understand, they voted but you against under understand it, the gist of my question. There is no, uh, this is, uh, we, well, you can it's talk not about 60 the Senate votes. budget It's, it's all Democrats, and it, all Democrats could vote on a budget. They could vote on it tomorrow. <laughs> And they could pass it if they put it on the table. You the know that. So why doesn't the president call the president Harry Reid and say, it, do that? Brett, I know that that's what you want to make this about. No, no, about. no. That's what you I'm know asking. that the only way in modern-day Washington to achieve a significant budget compromise is when both parties are willing to work together. That doesn't mean a unanimous uh, Republican vote in the House or a unanimous Democrat Democratic vote in the Senate. It means coming together on a, in a balanced way, on a balanced approach. The President and Democratic leaders have demonstrated their willingness uh, to embrace a balanced approach okay. that the American people <clears throat> overwhelmingly support. What the Ryan Republican budget does is say that we should double down on the same policies they got us into the fiscal mess and economic mess uh, that we're just recovering from. Okay, we're just, That's we're, a fact. We're, we're not making headway on this point, but we'll, we'll come back to it. On, on the great this, debate about the Senate budget proposal? No, on the President's I, budget being presented right. in the Senate. I think you know that there could be a vote on it and, and if they wanted to. Uh, this statement by the President in the Rose Garden has raised a lot of eyebrows and got a lot of reaction. I'm confident that the Supreme Court uh, will not take what would be an unprecedented extraordinary step of overturning uh, a law that was passed by uh, a strong majority of 
uh, a democratically elected Congress. So did the president misspeak? No, he didn't. And, and as the president said today uh, in uh, answer to a question after his speech, uh, he was referring very specifically to the fact that when it comes to uh, an attempt to solve what is widely acknowledged as a national economic challenge, our health care system, uh, that there should be due deference paid as a matter of precedent uh, to our democratically elected officials and the bodies that pass the law in question here. He was not, and, and you know, the, what was missing, I think, in the piece that led off your broadcast was the fact that the uh, attorney representing the government in response to the question from the judge answered yes of course we believe that the Supreme Court uh, has uh, and the courts have as their duty and responsibility the uh, the ability of uh, striking down so the laws as unconstitutional the, the president was talking about the precedent under the Commerce Clause here represented by the legislatures the duly elected legislatures uh, ability to address uh, challenges to our uh, national economy and sure. that is certainly what health care represents and there is uh, ample precedent including uh, very powerful opinions by very conservative judges on the appeals court, judges uh, Silberman and Sutton, uh, that back up that position. Liberal columnist Ruth Marcus, who is a supporter of the individual mandate and the health care law, wrote this, quote, the president went too far in that remark. That's what courts have done since Marbury versus Madison. For the president to imply that the only explanation for a constitutional conclusion contrary to his own would be out of control conservative justices does the court a disservice. Well, I would just say that, that Ruth uh, misunderstands what the president was saying and the president made clear today that he was referring uh, not in a blanket way uh, to, to what the courts uh, uh, how the courts should approach something like this, but to the uh, precedent that exists under the Commerce Clause and uh, the rulings prior to this one uh, in terms of deference to uh, the duly elected legisl legislature and their attempts to deal with a national economic challenge like our health care system. Okay, so, and quickly, uh, the, the DOJ will respond to this uh, order by Thursday for the, the well, three... I, 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 haven't, I haven't spoken to anybody at the Department of Justice, uh, but I, you know, I, I saw what the or read what the attorney present said, which is uh, she very clearly answered yes. Jay, this conversation will cer certainly continue. We thank you for your time.